So good morning, everyone. Um, this presentation, I will share with you some thoughts about tile maps, which is something that most of us are familiar with. So it's an efficient way to serve maps over the web while you pre-render a pyramid of tiles ahead of time, so they are organized, nicely organized in X, Y, and Z. Uh, and then it can be used, um, there's a dialogue between clients and servers that allows uh, clients to do things like panning and zooming and so on. So vector tiles are kind of combining the best of the both worlds because they are efficient as uh, raster tiles, but at the same time, they allow us some design flexibility because you have access to the underlying attributes. And uh, they are uh, using an encoding, uh, MVT from Mapbox, which is based on the Google Protobuf protocol. So until now, there was no really a standard way of doing uh, tiling. So there were some uh, previous efforts. So there was the WMTS that you, most of you probably know from the first generation of OGC web services. Uh, and it had some concepts, but it was using XML encodings. And then we have TileJSON, which provides some metadata about uh, tiles, but it does not support other coordinate uh, systems other than spherical mercator. So uh, OGC API tiles uh, became a standard in late uh, 2022, uh, an OGC standard. And it's basically uh, putting some formality to what people have been doing already for many years with the X, Y, and Z tile sets. So uh, on top of that, and like TileJSON, it adds some metadata that helps clients to do uh, a better job in, in rendering the maps. So it gives more elements that helps clients to, to render the maps in a nicer way. I, I will do demo that in a, in a second. So OGC API tiles supports all different types of tiles. There's no reason why we shouldn't, because it's just a rendering scheme. So you can have vector tiles, but you can have also map tiles or coverage tiles. So all of these uh, scenarios are supported within the standard. And like other OGC APIs, it's based on open API. So that means you have a description of the API, which is uh, machine readable and can be used by uh, code generators to generate stubs for Im implementations. Um, at the same time, if you are a developer and you want to explore the, the API, you can go to the Swagger page, which reads the uh, Open API document and transforms it into something nice to read, an HTML interactive page where you can actually um, try the different uh, endpoints. So for instance, this one um, is the Swagger page for an example of OGC API tiles, so you can see uh, which sorts of uh, paths you can find there. So looking uh, a little bit uh, deeper into the standard, as I mentioned, it's, uh, the core is very simple. The core, it, it's what was approved in uh, 2022. Basically, uh, it says that uh, the, the applications should follow this URL template, which most of us are using anyway. Uh, and then it says that it needs to respond with the status code, so 200 in case everything is okay and, and so on. So this is basically what you are, we are doing already uh, on the web. So if you conform to these uh, conformance classes, you can advertise it uh, in your conformance um, document uh, the way that I, I, I put there. And then there are some other optional uh, conformance classes uh, if you want to do, go even a little bit further. So for instance, um, you can go to uh, tile sets conformance class in the case that you have tile sets that don't cover the entire world. They just cover like a specific bounding box or they have perhaps a different projection 
or even um, to, to a limited set of zoom levels. Maybe they don't have all the zoom levels. And then there is the case where you have uh, you need to provide metadata for an individual tile set. There's also a, a conformance class for that. But as I mentioned, these conformance classes are, are optional, uh, and you can uh, just stick to the core if you like. So let's come to the fun part. What does this mean in terms of uh, application developers? What does this mean for developers? How does it translate? And I think I have here, let's see if I can, if this works, no. Okay, so, yes. So, this is an example where I'm uh, flying to uh, the bounding box of the, of the map and then loading two, uh, two OGC API tiles, uh, vector tile layers from the server and then also uh, advertising the names of the, uh, of the layers that are available. So, if you look at the, at the code of this, uh, you will see that uh, basically this is a leaflet-based uh, application. So you can see uh, that it's uh, calling the layers from a XYZ uh, URL, template URL. Uh, nothing uh, special about that, but this is the, the fun part. So it's uh, actually connecting to the endpoints to get the tile set metadata, and then dynamically it's retrieving the title of the layer. So the title of the layers is not hard coded; it's reading it from the endpoint. And this is because of the standard. It's because I know that in this specific endpoint I can get the the, the title. And the same thing for the bounding box. So the the fly to the bounding box happens because. Um, is it? It's, it's okay, it's here. It happens because I have access to the, the bounding box of the layer. So, yeah, if you, if you look here in more detail, and by the way, if you want, you can check out the, the code for this example. But so here you can see the, the first uh, or the core conformance class here uh, in the URL template. Oh, we have a video. Let's just, oops. <laughs> you can watch this later if you like. <laughs> Two Joannas, one speaking uh, on top of the other. Okay, uh, so, so this is the core conformance class. Uh, and this is the other part that I, I was telling you about. So we are uh, uh, retrieving the tile set metadata and then uh, we are getting the, the title dynamically from there, and then also the bounding box, and based on the bounding box, we can uh, um, create a point, and this is the point where uh, the map, the application is flying to when you, when you load it first. So this is how tileset metadata looks like. So actually, he's a, he has a bunch of other stuff. He has uh, also the description of the map. Of course, you can put something more uh, useful than uh, what I put there. It has some keywords. Um, and, it, it, and it can have even other things. So this is a piece of information that uh, really clients can use to make a, a better user, a user experience for the final users. So of course you can go even further, uh, which is the, the case where this is natively supported on the tools. So in the case of Leaflet, the OGC API tiles is not natively supported, but because it's conforming to this conformance class, um, everything kind of works, but I still need to, to read the endpoints. But then you have another use case, uh, which is open layers. And in open layers, there's native support for uh, OGC API tiles. So it's even easier for um, a developer to pull a layer. So you can see here, I don't need to pass the URL template because it already knows. So all I need to pass is the, basically the, the tiles endpoint and I need to um, specify what is the, the tile set that I'm using. So uh, the pyramid of tiles that I'm referring to uh, is rendering uh, with a particular projection. In this case, is Web Mercator code. 
So I, I have to specify that. Uh, and that's it. And then the, the layer is, uh, is on the map. You can also check this example if you like. And there's, um, there's a link there for the code. So let's talk about uh, implementations. So right now there are uh, 19 implementations registered on the OGC API Tiles website. Uh, and these are the implementations uh, that really specifically implement OGC API Tiles. But if you think of the first com conformance class, so just conforming to the template URL, then that's, that's even more. So uh, in the rest of the time that I have available, I would like to leave you with some resources if you want to explore more about uh, OGC API Tiles. Uh, first of all, there is the developer website for Tiles. It's, just, it's a Tiles developer, OGC.org. Uh, and then you have links for the demos that I showed today, for the, for the standard and for the Swagger page, uh, and a, co a couple of more resources. If you are really interested in knowing better the standard under the hood, you can go to the OGC API workshop website and then you have deep dives for the different OGC APIs, uh, explaining how they work, the different resources, and there's one for uh, OGC API tiles. And if you want to uh, take your application, your server application to the next level, you can uh, do a compliance certification. So uh, there is a, a test suite uh, made available by OGC Team Engine, which by the way, it's a, a, an OSGU community project. Uh, and you can use either the hosted version or you can download it and use it uh, locally if you want. It's uh, done in, in Java, so you can use Maven or you can use it, run it from within a Docker container. And finally, I invite you to come to the Open Standards Code Sprint, which will take place in uh, London, Geovation, uh, next week from uh, Wednesday to Friday. Uh, and it will cover all OGC API standards, including OGC API tiles. So if you are interested in knowing more about this, and uh, the first day of the sprint, we'll have a stream of tutorials about uh, different standards. Uh, registration is free, still open, um, and uh, you know it's open to all different levels uh, of knowledge about uh, OGC API, and it's also open to developers, but also um, other non-coding activities are very welcome during the sprint. So if you want to learn more, I invite you to uh, visit this URL. And that's it. Thank you very much 